kind of difficult for me because um, um, part of last year it's kind of rough for me. And um, so um, part of last year, this year, it's uh, hit me a whole lot. And it's very hard to do. And um, I got some help from Sharon and y'all. Okay. Because um, I didn't go to church hall last year because I am was um, depressed and um, grief. I put it that way. Hey, um, so this is Heavy Father. This is Heavy Father poem. This is our feel. It's my thought in God. We're into um, told me to write this poem it tell you about my father. My father um, was a good man and good um, believe in him. Because my father, we haven't gone to church way back. It's about in 1960 or that. And um, then um, Later years in that time, my father was a um, Ford driver, take pictures, in, in, he was in Air Force. And um, so um, he was taking um, pictures in love, love life, and with his family and his fishing. Um, that year we go fishing in Lake Conway in Arkansas, and we go every Friday or weekend, and uh, we had best time in fishing. And um, so, um, um, friends, and we live in Jacksonville, Arkansas, about five years, and great place to live. And then most of them live in small Tennessee. Small Tennessee is small town because. We lived there about almost 20 years, half of the, my allies. So, um, this is most, uh, we be close in dad and mother, and we live in Pipeville, Tennessee since 1978. And then in 97, 2003, 2012, my father was a good man to me and my family. Heavy father, my father, very sick. And he was he was by sick, cause um, he uh, had a heart attack three times in his life. A hey, uh, one is Nashville, one is um, Alaska. I remember that part. And hey, um, so I had to drive him to hospital in Alaska. That's difficult. It's about 50 foot of snow. That's a lot. Um, the, um, in 2011, 2012, in prayer, God, I see him in spirit. He passed away in 2012. I have rough time to cope with it. I didn't go to church that year because I was sad in 2013. I was. Um, then keep moving on in my life. I find God in June 2014. Um, 2012, he's passing ever since then. I pray for him every day. He, Heaven Father, took to him in his arms. He went to God, my Father. Helped me a whole lot in his taking my work in Alaska and Arkansas. He has. Hey, um, and we have fun game times falling, fishing, camping, all things overseas, Japan, Alaska. And it was 68, 69. I am still looking. Start a see my father do sometimes and might be the spirit and our family in heaven. I got a lot of people in heaven. P 
praising him so to keep our son, call him believe in Jesus. My father, good place in heaven, and my father can look down on me, be happy for me, while I go through in life. And so, I thank God what he done for him in heaven. Heavenly Father, thanks God what he done in praise, peace and earth in Jesus. They be naming Jesus in heaven, which over me some be have their what without praise him in God. We trust of them in peace, goodwill. I love you, Father. I miss him very deeply. I see you very soon. I thank God, praise in Christ. I, I am laughing well. God bless all of you. I thank Justin Tammy for me to do this. Hear me, praise God each every day. I love you in God. You to be Robinson. Um, Matthew 315. Man should not live um, by bread alone, but by every word that prays from the mouth of God. Press, um, this is Matthew 5. 5.17 Pass of the poor in spirit for those in the kingdom of heaven. Bless are those who mourn for they should be comforted. Thank you, everybody. Let me just use this and thank you, thank you. Uh, we won't be much longer. We just got a couple other things we want to do. But you know, when you uh, are a father, naturally or spiritually, there are certain things that you can feel at particular times that other people can't feel, maybe in the house or in the church. And uh, if you can put my title up just for a second, now I'm not going to preach, so don't think, oh my gosh, he's going to preach after all this. I'm not. But I think there's just something that I need to set into. Uh, I guess, motion the house here just for a second or two. Because, you know, for, I don't know, early spring, uh, latter part of the winter, it seems like we've we just been getting hit. One hit right after another. Bam, 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 bam. Individual families. And it's real easy in those processes to get down sometimes. And when you get down, it's it's hard to get back up. I know some people say just get up, get up. And, and you do. you got to get up. But sometimes you got to have help from somebody else to help you get back up. It's not always easy to get back up. And you got to have mercy and compassion on people that's down because if you if you just if you're just dogmatic about get up, it's going to sometimes instead of help them, it will hurt them. But you know, the word I heard from the Lord was set the direction. And what I want to do just from what I believe the spirit of God has instilled into my heart is to set the direction from this for this church to set to set the direction for you set the direction for me you know this past week week and a half I'm 55 years old and I have been through the good the bad and the ugly I have seen the good the bad and the ugly I've buried family I've buried friends I've, I've I mean I, I, it's just I've, I've seen a lot of crap and, and been through a lot of stuff but you know for some reason, and I don't know exactly why, but I, for some reason this past week and a half have been some of the roughest week that I have had spiritually, physically, and even mentally than I can ever recollect. And you may say, you know, well, what's going on? You know what? Nothing drastically has really went on. It's just stuff I feel in the spirit. And I heard the Lord say to me this morning after pretty much so a sleepless night, it's time to set the direction. And if you don't set the direction, it's going to people are going to continually stay down. And you know what? I'm not going to say that once you walk out of this church today that you're going to just be right back up. I'm not going to say that, but I am going to say the process of getting back up has begun. Can I say amen to that right there? First of all, there's a scripture in the book of Luke chapter 15. You don't have to put this scripture up unless you want to. Where the scripture says that when the prodigal son came back, that the father called for the best robe. The best robe in the house always belonged to the father. So the prodigal ended up with the best robe. 
and it belonged to the Father. So what you can say from that portion of Scripture was that the Son was covered by the Father. I want you to always know this. You are covered by the Father. We talked about our natural fathers this morning, and it was, it, it was wonderful. That was the mind of the Lord. But, you know, the real thing of it is, is our Heavenly Father has got you covered. When your natural father didn't have you covered, your Heavenly Father always had you covered. And, you know, it's a big thing. So people talk about their spiritual fathers, and I understand that concept. But, you know, whether you've got a spiritual father or not, you've always got a Heavenly Father who supersedes your spiritual or natural father. And He's always there for you, and He's always going to be there for you. You know, my heart this morning just kept thinking about David Huskins. I... I think of David Huskins. You know, if I had to pinpoint, they say, I, I've got many fathers, but there's one if I had to pinpoint to say was my spiritual father, it would probably have to be David Huskins. And, you know, what happened to him wasn't fair, wasn't right. But you know what? I, I, I still love the man. I, ha, I have no animosity, no hurt toward him. And you know what? I, I say this about David. He's at rest today. He's at peace today. I say that. But I guess the point I want to make is there is a direction that we got to understand. And the direction is not that we're down, is the direction is that we're up. Now, give me this scripture in the book of Revelation, chapter number 21, just for one second here. I just want to read a few verses. John said, I saw a new, I want you to count the word new. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there is no more sea. Next verse. And I, John, saw the holy city, there it is again, the new Jerusalem. Watch this now. Watch the direction coming down. From God, out of heaven, watch this, prepared as a bride adorned, just like the prodigal son, clothed, adorned for her husband. Three times the word new. New, new, new. Here's how your father sees you. New in your mind, new in your body, new in your spirit. Notice the direction, notice the direction of this woman. She's not up or she's not down coming up. She's up coming down. See it? Just stay with me for a few more minutes. This past week and a half, I have been down trying to get back up. It don't work. You have to see what John saw. She, she wasn't down trying to get up. She was up coming down. And girls, I know, when you, when you lose any grandmother and lose any mother, it's hard. But it's something like this past week, something just, I don't know what happened, but something like, I can't describe it, something just, and I'm not trying to be super spiritual, it's like something just died. I can't put my hand on it, can't put my finger on it, but something just died. And it affected me. And it was like I was down trying to get back up. And, you know, it don't make no difference how much you try to get back up. It's just hard to get back up. It's, here's the way you get back up. You've got to see that you're up and you're coming down. And there's a reason that you're coming down. Am I making any sense? Now, how did this direction ever get set? And here's what we've got to do today. This direction has to be set in all of our lives. And sometimes you have to have a father. You have to have an apostolic ministry help you set, set that direction. So this morning, I just want to help you, and then you help me get the direction set. Because it's not me up here trying to get you straight. It's us trying to get the direction in the right order. The, you know, the, this church gets, every single day, gets hammered from somewhere. And you know what? That's not your fault. That's probably my fault because of who I am. And some of the things that transpired in the fast, we, and you know what? It's going gonna, it's gonna to probably continually happen until we just outlive some of these people. I hate to be mean and ugly, and I don't mean to be that way, but that's just the way it is. Every single day or week, we're going to continually be hammered from some direction. And sometimes that will wear on you after a while. But then just the events of life will, will affect you. And just the events of life will just take their toll on you at times. I don't care. You know, life is good, but sometimes life can be just damned. <laughs> I'm sorry. It can just be hell. And if you ain't got good people around you, it's going to, it's, it can even get more hellish. But anyway, how does the direction get set? How did, this, how did this, this apostle come up with what he saw right here? Give me this next scripture right here, if you will. Now, my next one, next set of scriptures completely all the way. Matthew. Jesus, with his last statement hanging on the cross, said, It is finished. And when he said it is finished, watch how the direction got set. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. Watch this. 
And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain. Watch this. Here's the direction. The direction just got set right here. From top to bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks did rent. You know why the earth quaked and the rocks went? Because God just all of a sudden changed directions. For 4,000 years, everybody had been on the planet trying to get up. Oh, come on, hear me right here. Everybody had been trying to get from earth to heaven. Everybody had been trying to get into God's good favor. But when Jesus came and said, it is finished, the earth quaked. The rocks rent. I mean, rocks break open because you know what? God just set a new direction. And this morning, rocks are going to quake. Watch this. Rocks are going to win in the earth. And your earth is going to quake because you know what? You might have been down when you walked in here, but you're going to be back up by the time we walk out of here. I'm telling you, God set the direction. And when John said, I saw the bride coming down, he's just actually quoting right here what Jesus did. And it took Jesus to do it. Jesus had to reset the direction. In the garden, watch this, it was Adam and Eve coming down, or coming, they was up, coming down. But when they fell, they were down, trying to get up. We're trying to live back under an old law. We're trying to live back under something that God never did in 10. And I'm telling you, the direction is being reset in my life and the direction is being reset in your life. You are up, coming down. And honey, you have been adorned with everything that cross provided. Everything. There's a scripture in Numbers chapter number 4, verse 5 and 6. I don't have, to say, have time to go there. But where the scripture says, when they took down the coverings of the tabernacle, the veil of the tabernacle, they wrapped the ark up in it. And the ark was never seen outside the tabernacle uncovered. You are covered. By the goodness and mercy and grace of God. And the first thing they covered that ark with was a badger skin. Here's what I want to say to this church right here. I'm the pastor. She's the pastor. I'm going to say this to you and everybody here. We are covered with a badger skin. And the badgers cannot get to you. They can't. Now watch this. Watch this. What, what are we coming down for? Why don't we just stay up? Okay, watch this. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now watch this. Here's why we've got to come down. Now when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. The reason that operation happened from top to bottom was there were people standing at the bottom that couldn't get to the top. I'll say it again. There were people standing at the bottom. And watch what it says. Watch what it says. Now when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake, and those things that were done, watch it. See, I always thought the centurion said this, and it says, They feared greatly, and it was they saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. Look to your neighbor and say, I'm up. Now, let me let me do this right here just for one second. Cindy, you care to what no, just we don't have to have no music. I don't I don't think I'm the only one in this room that's had down days. But if you're in this room and you've had those down days for whatever reason, whatever given reason, just, just I want you to come up here just for a second and I want to pray over you. Me and Tammy want to pray over you. And I want you to know you are loved, you are covered, you are